What's happening? Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Bite. It's all the good stuff, all the bad stuff, and everything inside the world of Apple, plus our Captain America case giveaway winners. It's all here. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting a little sick of all these made up rumors and release dates for the iPhone 5, so we'll give you something a little more substantial to chew on this week. The Boy Genius Report released photos of a possible iPhone 5 clone from China, and we know this isn't the actual next gen iPhone. But it does resemble an iPhone 4 with smoothed out edges. The new iPhone is currently being built, and parts leaked out from the factories are a common thing, like this iPhone 5 proximity light sensor flex cable. So, this should be based on elements of the actual design. Now, we wouldn't show you these pictures if we didn't have a connecting story and a picture of the potential iPhone 5 that was taken by a 9 to 5 Mac reader over the weekend on Caltrain's which is one of Northern California's transit systems, was released. Now, the reader was tech savvy enough to identify it as a different eye device that he's never seen before. It doesn't look like the 3GS, it doesn't look like the 4, but it does look a lot like the earlier pictures we showed you. Now, this picture here sure looks a lot like Bigfoot. And check this one out. That's the Loch Ness Monster. Throw them in with the iPhone Caltrain's photo, all real. Now, new rumors have speculated the iPhone 5 is coming anywhere from September, now even to October for other countries. Sohu.com says the launch will also include a simplified iPhone 4, which we've heard before, but my gut says September for the US, and I'm sticking with it. Now, in iTunes news, App Advice reports the Big A will be announcing a full fledged re downloading and streaming service called iTunes Replay in the next few weeks. It's an extension of what Apple is already doing with music and the iCloud service, but it will now include TV shows and movies. Now, a recent software update to the second gen Apple TV allows users to stream their previously purchased TV shows directly from the box, so now you can both rent and purchase shows from iTunes. And if you haven't checked your iOS devices lately, you now have access to download previously purchased TV shows in the iTunes app to multiple devices as well. Now, the report says content that's eligible will have a little arrow on it, and some content will only be available to download five times. It's a nice addition that prevents me from having to bring my computer and sync to it when I'm on the road to rewatch some older shows, so I like it. Now, Apple's iCloud beta was also recently released for developers. It will replace MobileMe as their new syncing and storage service for both iOS 5 and Mac OS X Lion. The iCloud comes with five gigs of storage for free, and they also released the breakdown for how much it costs for additional storage. But one piece of the puzzle that they aren't talking about in the public that much is that the iDisk that's used for your personal storage will go away completely. So purchasing more storage space for iCloud is to store contacts, calendars, and iWork files, but all those personal files with folders you've created on your iDisk will go away. So you want to start backing them up to a service like Dropbox or you send it instead. And this is just a heads up for the Apple biters because this is stuff that you guys should know. All right, let's check out some quick bites. Skype for the iPad is free. It's officially here and optimized for the iPad after a premature release. It works over both 3G and Wi Fi, allows for two way video calling, and you can use Skype credits to call landlines and mobile phones directly. Now, more content coming to the iPad, Times Incorporated Magazines will be bringing all 21 of its magazines by the end of the year, including titles that are currently unavailable, like Entertainment Weekly, and personal favorites of mine, like Essence and In Style. Now, for those of you looking to accomplish one of life's most elusive goals, you might have done it already. The iPhone is king of the skies, and GoGo Wireless says that iPhones make up nearly two thirds of the devices on its in flight Wi Fi service. That's 10,000 feet in the sky. Now, iPod touches make up 20%, and Android devices are at 12%. So be happy. That's right. Tell all your friends you're all part of the Mile High Club with an iPhone. All right, let's get to our winners from the Captain America Shield case giveaway for the iPhone 4 and iPod Touch. The iPhone case winners are Michael Vega, George Lee, Bryce Clark, Chris Henry, and Mario Sandoval, who said he's actually Captain America. Now, the iPod Touch winners are Austin Cooley, Michelle Tom, and Tom Keefe, who said I would make him look like a really cool dad. So, uh, Tom, let me know how that works out. All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. Send me your emails to theapplebyteatcnet.com. I'm Brian Tong. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you all next week for another bite of the apple.